Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, what do you need to know about the consumer protection parts of Wall Street reform? And guess what? Unemployment remains a nagging problem in the state of Pennsylvania. The Secretary of Labor and Industry will provide perspective. Pennsylvania government and politics, guess, in depth and in detail. And it all starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. All right, welcome uh, back to the program. All right, some 22,000 and some pages in, in the financial regulatory reform bill passed by Congress uh, now a, a month or so ago. There's a bunch of aspects of it that deal with you out there, consumer protection. As part of our ongoing series on uh, financial literacy, where we brought in some folks from the credit union to talk with us about the consumer protection parts of that reform bill. Sitting across from me is Mike Kaczynski. He's the CEO of Sun East Federal Credit Union, and Rick Wargo, a frequent guest on the program. He's the executive VP. You're the lawyer also for the VA <laughs> Credit Union. Can I say that? You're the lawyer. That's okay. We have lots of lawyers on the program, Rick. All right, look, guys, let's, let's start with the, what, what I think is the important aspect of this. What, why should consumers care about this law? Let me start with you, Mike. It's an important time right now. Everyone's going through this economic crisis, and so many aspects from other financial institutions, Wall Street, have had an impact on everyday Americans. And Congress jumped in, wanted to make a difference so that this didn't happen again. So as a result of all of that, this bill was, was introduced and on the 21st of July, signed by the president mm -hmm. into law. It's going to take a lot of time for us to get through what those many thousands of pages have to tell us, but it will make a big difference. Well, can you, is there any examples, for example, for our viewers out there about what it means, for example, for, for getting credit? Does it affect the credit card industry at all? There's virtually regulations that apply to every aspect of the financial services industry. So in terms of access to consumer credit, um, credit is available. Banks and credit unions will be willing to lend. What this bill does, and if we dig into some of the consumer protections, is tries to wring some of the sharp credit practices that uh, fueled uh, uh, the consumer meltdown in 2008 out of uh, the financial services now, sector. Now, does this mean like, lo lo like I sound like a student, uh, does, that, does that mean loans that were made when people didn't have sufficient borrowing ability or... You know, the criticisms that were made in the housing sure. industry, you know, leading up to this crisis, uh, the bubble that perhaps started the recession. Go ahead. What's going to happen on that front? The, just the change in the mor mortgage guidelines, uh, what consumers are going to be asked to provide. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more information. The underwriting is going to be stricter. Those individuals that were able to get a mortgage years yeah. ago will have a harder time today. So yeah. it's really important for them to manage their credit score and work with their the institutions that they're borrowing from now so they keep that yeah. credit score up so when it's time to borrow again they're in great shape so, these regulations help to right, make so, sure that's going to happen i'm sorry so summarizing this is going to it's going to have an impact on on home mortgages back, back to the credit go ahead no i was just going to say that the the good side of what mike was explaining for the consumer is again the regulatory mechanisms in place are designed so that agencies can step in. Um, some of the low doc, no doc loans that got a lot of people in trouble, they're going to be able to say, these things stink, we're wringing them out of the system. Yeah, well, what's this, this business of, of sort of these hidden fees that we often read about that, that mer merchants talk? I mean, does it regulate? Well, all the fees, I, I get these applications. My wife takes care of most of that. I, can't, I look at them and like, I can't. I, I, First of all, I don't understand them, and second, the print's so small, I don't know what I have when I have it. Go ahead. Um, I guess there's Is a lot. Is it clear? Both of us, it's going to be more clear. Oh, Will it ever good. be written in everyday, wow. uh, you know, middle America uh, ability to, to read that? I'm hoping it will, but... Uh, we're, we're working hard towards that. As a credit union, we know we take the time uh, mm -hmm. to give the consumer the information that they need to know. Okay. Uh, you'll see in many things that the credit unions do, there's not those hidden little lines. Right. We come right out and we say, here's what it's going to cost you, here's how it's going to benefit you, and we move forward from there. This, uh, this legislation 
wants to get that out across America. Does that mean, let's take, you know, finally on the credit card business, that you're going to find more people who won't get credit cards? I mean, now, you know, one of the things that go into a college campus where I spend most of my the tables are lined up, you come on campus, you sign your name, you get a credit card. Is that going to interfere or make it more difficult for people just to get normal, you know, credit cards? Legislation that's already in place, known as the CARD Act, and right. we've been on a couple times yeah, and talked right. about that, does have specific provisions curbing how you can market to college students. Here again, credit should be available to those who are qualified to get it. And again, the focus of a lot of consumer protection should be eliminating some of the sharper practices so that the consumer does not get into a product that's over their head. All right, when we come back, I want to talk about, I want to ask you about this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Is it something that the consumers should care about or know about? But you'll explain that. All right, we'll be back following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. All right, uh, back, back uh, with our uh, uh, show that uh, is going to deal, first of all, with unemployment. We're going to have the Secretary of Labor and Industry come on in a few minutes and uh, see where we stand with unemployment and the prospects that it will get better in the state. Before that, we're dealing with this financial regulatory overhaul, and it has some consumer protection aspects that are pretty important. It looks like, in summary, tougher to get mortgages. Yes. More difficult for credit cards. You're not going to be, or you don't know, maybe you don't want to go there, right? Willy-nilly, just to go get credit cards, you think they're going to be tougher to get I think them? Be, I think there'll be a tightening, and that's arguably healthy. It's arguably healthy. Okay. How about this C Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? Why should anybody care about that? Is it that important? Uh, that's really important. It's going to potentially change the way any financial institution, bank, credit union, what have you, approaches the consumer. That's the body created by this law. Mm -hmm. As I've said a couple times, we're going to wring sharp practices out of the credit industry. They're going to write all the new rules mm -hmm. and regulations for deceptive practices and credit underwriting. It's going to take a while to get all that in place, and that's why we don't know ultimately where it's all going. So is this supposed to stop? Would, will this bureau, I mean, as I understand it, this bill is supposed to prevent the subprime mortgage problem that we have in the past and, and will stop what went on with investment banks where they were acting not all, often not in the interests of the people who invested money in, in them but in their own interests and as a result of that they carried out practices that weren't regulated. They're going to be more regulated in this? Go ahead. Yes, you've heard a lot about transparency, the word transparency yeah. mentioned all the time and giving the federal government the ability to go to these financial firms, banks, credit unions, and really look in, and see what we're investing in, what yeah. we're doing, how we're, we're granting loans, uh, looking at executive compensation, really opening things up so mm -hmm. that this problem doesn't happen again, uh, not allowing institutions to get too big to fail. We've heard that thrown out there yeah. as well. Um, now, by that, by that, do we mean that they're too big to fail means if they fail, they create such a downside for the economy they throw the economy well maybe not into a recession but certainly damage it is that what is that generally what yes. that term correct means? that's the yes okay all right but look before I w w let, you, let you go one of the things that we often talk about here and we probably ought to do this in August is to get into this business of of young people teenagers their borrowing habits and particularly college students and their credit what what's the late any update on that are we, are we going to is there anything in that bill that relate specifically to young people or is that go ahead um, I think we're gonna have to see what the Consumer Protection Bureau um, is up to uh, flip part of that to Mike you're in compliance with the card act how are you approaching college students any differently um, we really you would never see our credit union out on campus uh, that was not something we did mass uh, right. marketing to students we take a very individualized approach uh, coming into the college classroom and talking about fi financial literacy, educating them, helping them get prepared for a credit card. So often they'll get a card 
from yeah. you know a large institution, and before they know it, they're five, six, seven thousand dollars in debt and don't know how to pay. Okay. It. All right, I want to thank you guys. We'll come in and before we get into the college years with all you know thousands of Pennsylvanians going back to school, we come on and we're going to give them some cautions as they go in. We want them Sounds to borrow, good. but what do you always say? Borrow what? Wisely. Wisely, yes. smartly. All right. All right. Unemployment, it remains perhaps the most serious economic problem confronting the state. We're fortunate to have the Secretary of Labor and Industry. We're going to have a little chat about labor, unemployment, and what the administration is attempting to do to offset some of the unemployment problems back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, Sandy Vito, she's the Secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry. Join us. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, it's good, good to have you here. All right, look, you happen to unfortunately deal with maybe the most pressing problem in the state, one that, you know, most voters care deeply about, the citizens of our state very concerned about, and that is unemployment. Give us a picture of the sort of this basic statistics as we have this discussion, you know, late July, early August, in the summer months. T t talk about that. Well, there's about 600,000 people in Pennsylvania who are unemployed currently. Um, we are seeing some signs of economic recovery. So over the last six months, we've created a net of 64,000 jobs. Obviously, that's not enough to absorb right. all the people who are unemployed. Right. The other disturbing uh, trend, Terry, is that we're seeing an increase in the number of longer-term unemployed, particularly among older, uh, older workers. Uh, Madam Secretary, let me ask you this question. One of the things we hear about, and I don't know how they get a number. I mean, you, it's your department. You also get stuff from the La Department of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you know, the, the folks in Washington. We hear a lot of talk about people who've given up looking for a job. So they say, okay, unemployment nationally, 9.5. Let's just use that. And, and you know, there is another six or seven percent we could throw in for the people who've stopped looking. What's your sense about what that, what that is like here in our state? It, 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 there's also Big. a good number of people yeah. who are what we call discouraged worker. Yeah. It tends to be about half as many who are unemployed when you count discouraged workers and people who are working part-time but would like to work full-time. So really you get closer to about yeah. three-quarters to almost a million people. Is it regionally, I mean, unemployment, what you said, 9.2? Yes. 9.2. We typically think of sort of east of the Susquehanna and lower Susquehanna Valley and down in the Philadelphia suburb, you know, being pretty good. And is our unemployment across the border, are there are higher pockets of it, in different regions of the state. Yeah, there are higher pockets in different regions. The northeast part of the state was yeah. particularly particularly hard hit. This area, um, South, South Central, Central, Central right. frankly, um, did not see unemployment as quickly as the other parts of the state. Right. It is still approaching the eight and seven and eight percent in this area yeah. in this area as well now too, though. Yeah, we're, we're doing a little tutorial here. We hear an awful lot of uh, of. Uh, conversation about unemployment. The secretary's here and we're, 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 gonna, we're trying to get just beyond that basic big number so we get a sense about where it is in the state. The other important thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, industries. In the recession that occurred in 90-91, it wasn't an old, manuf just old manufacturing. Remember we used to have recessions after, the, after World War II. They really hit the basic industries, coal, oil, steel, uh, heavy, you know, all the heavy metals, uh, paint, glass, lead, that kind of, but then we had real estate, we had uh, insurance, we had banking. Is this generally hitting a variety of occupations or is it, you know, identified in one or two industries? It's a great question. One of the reasons that Pennsylvania has had a lower unemployment rate than the United States 
for most of the recession and frankly before is because we have a diversified economy. So even throughout the recession, healthcare, yeah. education, mining and logging, largely because of Marcel, Marcel Marcel Shell, Shell, yeah. and the green economy actually have either grown or uh, at least okay. held steady. So we've seen the hardest hit sectors are construction and manufacturing. Okay, so and typically we, we would have them in, manufa in, in manufacturing anyway. And, and I, I think beginning probably with Governor Thornburg through Governor Casey and Governor Ridge and now Governor Rendell, the economy you know, has really much more diversified than it was when we were so committed to the old heavy metals, right? That's right. That's exactly right. All right. We're talking uh, uh, with the Secretary of Labor and Industry. When we come back, I want to talk about unemployment compensation and all that business. We'll do that and more when Pennsylvania Newsmakers returns. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by... Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, I'm joined by Sandy uh, Vito. She's the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Industry, and we're, she's giving us a tutorial on, I think, some pretty important behind the scenes, behind the numbers that's really helpful to understand the unemployment situation in Pennsylvania. Before I go on, and I want to ask you about, you know, how people can get help and, you know, what industries might be hiring, let's talk a little bit about the, what the federal government did, extending unemployment compensation, uh, giving uh, workers additional weeks and uh, explain that and, and, and what that's all about. Well, it, the Congress reauthorized right. the extensions on June 22nd, which meant that 200,000 people in, who were hurt in June and July had just been unceremoniously cut off of benefits were able to get back onto benefits. So it was hugely helpful. 200,000 in our state alone. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. And um, which it essentially means that you have benefits for longer, longer than the usual 26 weeks, weeks which is the normal maximum. Mm -hmm. Now, but that's only a, is that another temporary extension which runs out? I think I got that right. Go ahead. That's, that's correct. It runs out in November, at the end of November of this year. And so when it ends up then, what, Congress has to extend it again or... Or, well, or what, what emergency are benefits are always intended to be temporary. So I think it would be premature to say, well, they're going to okay. extend it again. It really depends okay. on what's happening yeah. in the economy. Now, originally, well, I, the, the way it looks, the economy is not going to get much better in a couple of months. But the original, just so we get the facts straight here, originally you're eligible for 26 weeks. A is maximum that of 26 weeks. And then you correct. get extended for how long? It's a to it, 99 weeks total, including the 26 weeks. Okay. All right, let's talk. One of the things that your department does is that, you know, you're in the business of helping, assisting people as they go through this job search. Now, you've already pointed out there are a lot of people who've dropped out, and, but there are a lot of people who are still actively looking for work, right? quarter of a million people right now are, in, are registered in our CareerLink looking for work every day. Well, well, to explain CareerLink. CareerLink is a center where individuals can go and we'll help you write a resume, look for a job, and in a lot of cases enroll you, enroll someone in retraining so they can get the skills to there, get a job now or in the future. Are CareerLinks located in how many counties? There's 67 CareerLinks, there's one in every county. Really? Including yeah. Forest County? Well. Not sure about Forest County. I only say that. I love the county. Don't get me wrong. It's more deer there than people, but that's okay. Right, right. We love there's Forest County. There's 67 career links. I'm going to check it. on Forest County. I got it. Well, there's 67 <laughs> counties. Maybe you, have two, right. maybe you have two in some of the... Uh, some of the. So, I think that's right. So talk about... Okay, so tell us what services you... you and flesh that out a bit. You go there, what do you get, a resume? We'll help you do a resume. We'll help you bone up on your interview skills. Mm -hmm. We'll help you do a job search. Um, in fact, we've encouraged employers to post their jobs on our system. We've seen an uptick in some of the jobs posted on our system. So we'll really help folks look for yeah. a job. But more importantly, if you're in an industry and you're in a skill set that has become obsolete in our economy, and it's very, very hard. This is a very traumatic time for people. Yep. We'll help you get the retraining you need yeah. to be competitive. Now, you, you don't, do you provide the money or you just provide sort of the, you, you give people the tools and the, and the knowledge to move forward. Is that basically it? We also do training grants. The oh, first thing we'll do is wow. check to see if you're eligible for a Pell Grant, 
which many people are, and if not, there are training grants available that we enroll um, thousands and of people. And there's still in. monies available. In Absolutely, in every career. All right, yes. now, we don't have your website here, I don't think, but so could they get on the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry website? That's right. And, and so you could Google that or whatever. Um, or, no, no promotion for Google, but you could Google that. <laughs> you could Google that or um, the the website at the Commonwealth that has links to all. Commonwealth, uh, okay. It's, it's www.heretohelp.gov. There you go. Heretohelp.gov. Even, even I can figure that out. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't, I don't, I don't think, I mean, how many people avail themselves of this, of the of this huge number? Well, I mean, actually, if you don't have the number in front of you, that's okay. Well, uh, I want to talk just about, uh, we have a quarter of a million people in some service at the career link, so that's 250,000 wow. people. We also have a subsidized job program that we did as a pilot project, and we've had, which means private sector employers, um, some, non some non-profits, will hire someone and will there there's a subsidy they can basically do it for up to thirteen dollars an hour and for a lot okay. of people this is the right program yeah. eighteen thousand people in that yeah. to, wow. program right now wow. all right now b before i let you go one of the things we hear about all the time are what jobs you know here we are we got this tough economy are there various types of jobs that are now you think available for people that you know maybe they're not trained for and they might have to get into a career link to get some training that's right but what would you what 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 do you know about what best explains how people can move forward with in terms of the, uh, likely jobs? Well, in both healthcare and well, the green healthcare, economy and, yeah. and energy, yeah. there are still jobs. It's a really good competitive labor market for um, people seeking jobs. So weatherization, solar panel uh, installation, mm -hmm. um, actually even in manufacturing, Gamesa, the the manufacturer of wind turbines did have to do yeah. some initial layoffs. They've ha hired every one of their yeah. workers back. So there are growing fields, and, and once nursing, for instance. Yeah. And once the legislature and the governor and everybody irons out all this Marcella Shale business, you know, get the environmental protections, decide, you know, if, if and what looks like they are going to do some taxes and then decide which municipalities and who gets what, there's going to be a lot of jobs produced in that. Is that have you we're looked at that very, yet? Yeah, we're working very carefully, closely with the industry to recruit. We recruit yeah. in all the career links um, where Marcel Shell has a presence. Yeah. So we are already recruiting locally. Okay, we're almost out of time, but without debating the merits of how many jobs in a study that was done, we are talking about. We, got, we don't need the numbers, but we are talking about a sizable number of jobs for our state, right? That is correct. Okay. Yes. There you go. Madam Secretary has the last word. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. Stay healthy.